In this video, I want to give another way of solving uh, this differential equation that we've been talking about. As I mentioned before, it can be somewhat difficult to solve this equation when the steady state voltage uh, changes over time um, because perhaps you are injecting a electrical uh, current into the cell. If you're doing that, then the steady state voltage is going to obey uh, the following rule, which we've talked about. Uh, steady state voltage is equal to the resting membrane potential, which I've been calling E, uh, the input resistance, which is R, and the level of injected current that you are currently injecting. And um, as I mentioned before, the injected current um, can and will vary over time quite often. So one of the simplest injected current protocols we could have is a step current, um, but we could also have you know something more crazy, a more noisy injection, or perhaps a, a sinusoidal uh, wave, or some sort of smooth wave. In these cases, it can be somewhat difficult uh, to solve this differential equation, or it might seem difficult. Uh, so I want to, I gave already one way that you can numerically solve for this equation, and in this um, video I'm going to give another uh, method for solving this differential equation uh, that introduces, um, that not, not only will this give you another way of solving the equation, but it perhaps might give you a little more intuition uh, about uh, the system of passive neuronal membrane. So the passive neuronal membrane actually is a very special uh, class, or belongs to a special class of differential equations. Um, specifically, this differential equation is a uh, linear um, shift invariant system. And uh, what, I, what do I mean by this? Well, first of all, let me define what I mean by a system. A system is some sort of function or functional that maps um, an input to an output. So I'll say L is my system here, and I have an input function and an output function. So in what we've been talking about, our input function, which I've called X of T here, might be your I, I, and J, so what you're injecting as a current, whether it's uh, a step function or um, some sort of noisy function. Given uh, this input into the system, we can we know how to plug that in already and solve for um, the membrane potential, and we can do that numerically. When we do that, uh, we will get out um, some voltage trace over time. So in the case of a step current, the uh, voltage trace would look something like um, this it sort of exponentially approaches its steady state, and then when the current step comes off, it goes down. So these two examples um, are sort of loosely matching. And if you inject a noisy um, current, then you'll also get um, some sort of a noisy voltage trace out. So both uh, the voltage and the injected current are functions of time. So we can think of the uh, differential equation we've been talking about as mapping uh, one function into another function. Now, if that's what a system is, what is a uh, linear system? Well, a linear system has two properties, and uh, I will write them out quickly. So the first property of a linear system uh, is what's called uh, homogeneity, or you say that the system is homogeneous. And in this case, I have, again, an input x of t and an output y of t, and I'm scaling the input x of t by some constant uh, alpha. So just imagine alpha is any old parameter. What this is essentially telling you is that if you let's say, double the input, or multiply the input by some constant alpha, then you will double uh, your output. So, if we're thinking about this in terms of uh, in terms of a neuron, if you say, so this is your i, i and j, and you double your injected current, what is this going to do to your voltage? And if you actually do this experiment, you'll see that, again, the voltage will approach steady state at a slow rate, and then when the current step is off, it'll approach um, back down to its original resting membrane potential. And if you double the amount of current, uh, it will exactly uh, double in its amplitude. And why, why is this the case? Well, you can remember that the uh, steady state voltage um, is equal to E plus R I and J. So if you um, double I and J, then you're doubling the increase above the resting membrane potential. So in other words, if you sort of forget about the resting membrane potential and uh, assume the resting membrane potential is zero, um, it actually doubles. The second property of linear systems is that they are additive. So what I've written here is I've asked you to consider two different inputs, x1 and x2, and essentially if 
it doesn't matter if you add the inputs together and then apply the transformation, uh, or if you calculate what the, ind the inputs would give individually and then sum them together. These two things uh, should be the same. What is this telling us uh, about um, our neuron model? Well, it's saying if you have, let's say, two different current sources, so I'll just call I1 and I2, you have two different electrodes in the cell, let's say, and the first one you're giving a step current, and in the second one you're passing some sort of uh, sinusoidal current. Well, what this second principle is saying is that you might as well not have two electrodes. This is equivalent to injecting, uh, I'm not sure if I can draw this, but a sinusoid where halfway through a current step is applied, and then the sinusoid sort of continues, and then the current step uh, comes off, uh, and then the sinusoid continues. Um, essentially, this injected current is equivalent to applying these two currents simultaneously. You would get the same response uh, to the membrane uh, in terms of the membrane potential. And I'm sort of just going to lay out these principles here, and it's up to you to sort of look at the system and convince yourself that these are actually true, or these principles actually hold for um, a linear membrane. And I think, you know, it, it should be pretty intuitive that um, these properties do hold. And then the last property that I want to talk about in this video is this shift invariant uh, part of the system. And the shift invariant part is very easy. And I'm just going to sort of write it out pictorially because I think um, it's so clear that writing it out in terms of the math is a little bit um, obtuse. If you have, what shift invariance is saying is if you apply some sort of impulse, um, we'll just use a step current, but you could also have some sort of noisy injection. So if you apply this impulse at some time T1 and measure the response of, v, uh, of the voltage, so we'll say the response of the voltage is V1, and then you wait some period of time and apply the identical um, perturbation, whether it's a step current or some sort of noisy. Um, you can just imagine that you're applying the same current and you again measure the response and we'll say the response here is V2 taken at some second time V T2. Um, essentially V1 is going to equal V2. So the response of the membrane potential to these identical perturbations at a later time uh, will match the initial response here. And this is called shift invariance, which not all linear systems are shift invariant, uh, but the simple equation that we've been working with is shift invariant. I think this is the clearest um, property that it's sort of self-evident if you really understand what this equation is telling you. Okay, so that's it for this video. I'm going to have a second part to this video in which I uh, use these three properties and show that you can solve the differential equation um, by uh, characterizing the response of the system to an impulse or delta function, and from that you can uh, use the response of the system, which is Green's function, you can use Green's function to solve for uh, the dynamics of the system. And I'll show you that in the next video.